This channel is proudly partnered with the What The Funk shop. Please check out their store for all sorts of products. They have miniatures, dice, game master screens, home decorations and many other things. You will find the link in the description and in the pinned comment. And make sure that you use my code for a special discount. They currently have a Halloween sale going. This channel is proudly sponsored by The Red Room Publishing. Please check out their store for exclusive tabletop RPG products. They have recently released Uncharted Seas, a pseudo-historical RPG of maritime explorations in the Age of Discovery. You will find the link in the description and in the pinned comment. Make sure that you check out their contest as well. Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Aether Nexus. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this fantasy mecha tabletop RPG, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the battlefield and actions. The battlefield comprises the areas available to knights and foes involved in battle. The bounds of the battlefield are determined by the seer and presented to the players. The battlefield is broken up into distinct locations measured in spans. A span is not an exact distance and its size is relative to the scale of the battle. Consider a span not as a range or distance but as a zone, scene, or set piece within the battlefield. Spans can be laid out in any configuration depending on the preferences of the players and the seer. For example, you have open spans. These are not arranged in any particular shape. You have simple spans, which are arranged in a simple shape such as a row or a square grid. Then you have complex spans, which are arranged in various shapes according to dynamic paths and isolated areas. Varied terrain provides interesting challenges that can affect the battlefield. A span doesn't always have noteworthy terrain, or it can include multiple terrain types. For example, you have skyborne terrain, such as open sky, plunging pits. You have obscured terrain, featuring dense woodlands, thick fog. You have elevated terrain, concerning sheer cliffs, soaring walls. You have sheltered terrain, featuring clustered buildings, littered ruins, and so forth. When it comes to range, ranges are tracked in three increments. You have engaged, when knights and foes occupy the current span. You have adjacent, when knights and foes occupy spans close to each other. And you have distant, when knights and foes occupy spans farther than adjacent. When you leave a span, each engaged foe can make a free attack against you. Likewise, you can make a free attack against an engaged foe who leaves the span. After these attacks are resolved, the targeted knight or foe moves into the new span. Now concerning actions, during battle and other scenes organized in turns, you can perform any two actions on your turn. Actions fall into one of four categories, activations, interactions, maneuvers, and strikes. Each action type has associated basic actions, to which you almost always have access to. On foot knights also have access to additional basic actions, while sky ships have actions of their own, available to knights aboard the vessel. When it comes to activations, these trigger unique abilities, gear and magic, like those granted by ratus frames or apparatus frames, augments and boons. When it comes to interactions, they typically target and affect knights, their allies and foes, and the environment around them. Concerning maneuvers, they include traversing the battlefield, tactical movement and flanking foes. When it comes to strikes, it's about targeting foes with damage or debilitating effects, typically in the form of attacks. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about attacking and defending. As you can see, the terrain is quite simple yet, you have some nuances to it. When it comes to determining the range, obstacles, different pathways and such, and the actions are pretty simple to understand. You have four categories, and within those four categories, you can carry out any sort of technique or simple action that you can think of. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, consider joining as a member and enjoying exclusive tabletop RPG tips. You can also use the super thanks button and check out the pinned comment below. 
This has been Abraham L. Jaguar, a professional game master. I am currently unavailable for professional sessions, but I will put my contact information in the description and in the pinned comment for when I am available again. And remember, in tabletop RPGs, you are not having a conversation about your characters. You are experiencing the game world as your characters. Once again, thank you and see you later.